Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Gilmer here for this late night video. Right here on the Peter Gilmer YouTube wrestling page, youtube.com slash Peter Gilmer. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like this video. Hit that hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to all my other channels as well. And hit that bell, turn on all my notifications so you never miss an upload. And find me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. That's it. Alright, on this late Wednesday night, March the 4th, 2020, or if you're watching from somewhere else, March the 5th, 2020, it is time for your late night AEW Dynamite review for March the 4th, 2020 from Denver, Colorado. And it was a pretty good show. Not great like last week's show was, but it was a pretty good show. It's also with John Moxley. And comes out the new AEW champion. And talks about the belt being uh, representing pro wrestling. And how the fans brought pro wrestling back. And he said the, uh, Jericho, uh, the belt doesn't belong to Jericho. It never belonged to Jericho. Because he's not locked up beyond anymore. Uh, he says he's going to defend the belt with his life. And... He's, he's going to crawl through hell, climb mountains, and nobody's going to take his title. He calls on anybody to fight him. And he knows the inner circle ain't done with him yet. And he gives, uh, he dares them to come for him. And then Jericho and the, and the inner circle come out. Jericho says he, is, he doesn't need the belt to be the champion. And says Mox, Mox has an M.O. And, uh... And uh, all of it paid off. And the Mox era has begun. And the win was all just based on a lie. And he trained for three months to face a one-eyed one man. Uh, but uh, he calls Moxley a liar and a cheater. And uh, he says that, uh, he, that uh, Moxley, uh, he always has a plan. And then Mox says he'll do the same as, as he did at Revolution. And. And um, actually, uh, Jericho said uh, uh, Mox won't walk out of Denver on his own two feet. And uh, if he. And uh, if he does walk out, Jericho will leave for 30. No, 60 days. So Jericho will be out two months if Moxley. Uh, can uh, win or somehow uh, walk out walk out of Denver on his own power. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. And uh, we'll see that at the end of the night, uh, we have Darby Allen and Moxley teaming up against Jericho and Sammy Guevara. Should be a good match, and we'll see what happens with that. So I give the first segment two and a half out of five stars, and uh, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. All right, match number one. We have eight man tag team action. We had SCU, all of SCU, Daniels, Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky teaming up with Coke, Coke, Coke Cabana, who sucks dick. And uh, they take on the Dark Order, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, and the Beaver Boys, John Silver, and 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 uh, and, and uh, Alex Reynolds. Match is all right. Didn't last that long. Uh. Pretty much a back and forth match. SCU was in control to start. Then the Dark Order start isolating Christopher Daniels. Uh, who gets then after that? Kaz gets the hot tag. And then they team up on Evil Uno. Uh, Kaz hits a cutter for a near fall. Coke comes in, hits a moonsault for a near fall. And then the Sky Skyline, or the Chicago Skyline, whatever he fucking calls that weird move he does off did off the top rope. I think they call it the Skyline. I, I might be wrong on that. Uh, and they get they get the win over the Dark Order. And uh, the match was alright. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. Not not a bad match per se, but kind of went a little sl little uh, too a little quick. Uh, and. Uh, you know, I I came into e I came into the to this this uh, episode, you know, 
all hyped up. I thought the Exalted One was going to show up tonight. I thought Matt Hardy was going to be on the show. No, they teased us. They teased us, damn it. You know, the whole thing with, with uh, the Bucks of Youth, the Young Bucks, appearing on Free to, Free to Delete, Episode 10. The, uh, the preparation, I think they called it, where uh, the, the, the Bucks go to North Carolina and they meet up with Matt. And uh, Matt goes, Bucks of Youth, I knew you'd come. So that's a precursor to, I don't know when, I don't know what's going to happen, man. I really don't know. But I, I can tell you that Matt Hardy will be in AEW probably at Blood and Guts. I think he will be at the at Blood and Guts. The Exalted One will be at Blood and Guts. I, I, I can almost guarantee that. Not going to guarantee it, but I can almost guarantee it. And uh, that's that. Uh, speaking of the Dark Order, even Uno comes out and says, "This is not what not, not, was not was this was this was not supposed to happen like the way it did." And he says, "When the Exalted One shows up, heads will roll." So we see what happens with that. And, you know, when Matt Hardy shows up, <laughs> the Dark Order is going to be one fucking mega faction, and uh, they're going to get the tag belts, and uh, it's just going to be. Utter chaos in AEW. And I and that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. Alright, then we get clips shown of the tag team titles match between uh Kenny and pa Adam Page against the Young Bucks. A phenomenal match. If you didn't see it, go watch it again. We get that. Then we get the match number two. Big Swole! Big Swole! Defeated Le defeated the librarian Leva Bates. Pretty quick match, like like almost a minute and a half match. Uh, Peter Avalon tried to distract, leave, distract Big Swall. Leva hits a backstabber, but uh, that's the only offense she has. Big Swall comes back. Uh, she hits dirty dancing to get the win. Match gave two point two five out of five stars. That was basically it for that. Then you give two shits about that, and we move on. Then we get a, then we get Cody Rhodes cutting a promo. Saying he doesn't know how to talk about his loss to MJF at Revolution. Um, and he, t and he talks about people getting into the business and trying to get on the card. And then winning the, uh, getting on the pay-per-view. And getting the winner's purse of the match. Getting the winner's uh, money from the purse, you know what I mean. Uh, he can't take the loss to MJF. He's really distraught. And he calls out MJF to say that he beat him fair and square to his face. But instead of MJF, we got Jake Roberts. I can't say like uh, uh forget who uh said. I think it was I think the Ultimate Warrior said that like Jake the Snake. So Jake Roberts, old sixty some odd year old Jake Roberts comes out. Uh, and he says he's tired of hearing uh. Cody bitch and moan and bitch and moan. And he says MGF got to him. And he says that uh he will not uh he he will slay Cody. Don't know what that means, but okay. Uh he says he has a client. Hmm. He has a client that's gonna take out Cody and says that uh like the Phoenix will rise from the ashes. I have no idea what that means. Uh, he says it's been 20 years since, uh, since he got, he got, took him 20 years to get clean. And talks about, talks about, a, talks about, you know, having a snake in his corner and all that other stuff. And he says he'll have his client and dares Cody to bring Arn Anderson. Uh, and he says Cody's taking the whole pie and, uh. He says, what a snake wants, he gets. And he wants he wants Cody's share. And says, and he says, an old a wise man once said that never turn your back on someone you, you're afraid of. What does that mean? I have no clue. Jake likes to talk in riddles. But he's probably one of the best talkers in the business. Trust me. Trust me. 
Bury me, Snake Man! Bury me! You know, old, the old, old Ultimate Warrior uh, feud with Jake the Snake Roberts back in the day. You know, with the Undertaker. <laughs> that was good stuff back in the day. But, uh, yeah, so Jake Roberts is in AEW now. He's all elite. And, uh, now the question is, who is his client? Who is going to be his client that takes out Cody? Is it MJF? Maybe. Or is it somebody new? I think it's going to be Brody Lee. I think it's Brody Lee. Otherwise known as Luke Harper. I think it's going to be Luke Harper. I have a feeling it might be Luke Harper. Because Luke Harper was supposedly supposed to be on Dynamite tonight. And a lot of people, a lot of news reports saying that Brody Lee was going to appear on Dynamite tonight. That didn't happen. So don't trust the news. Don't trust you know who either. Uh, not that he did a video or anything, but you know, just don't trust him. The, the sex offender that he is. Uh, but I digress. Um, uh, so we get that. So it was a pretty good promo. I gave it three out of five stars, and that's pretty much it. All right, then we get uh, Pac versus Orange Cassidy shown, the, the highlights of that match, where Pac won with the Brutalizer. And speaking of Pac, he takes on Chucky e. T in our third match, and he defeats Chucky e. T with the Brutalizer. Uh, pretty decent match, went back and forth. Uh, Chucky e. T and Trent did the hug thing, a la, you know, Mr. Okada. But uh, they did that. Uh, Chucky hits the awful waffle, look to beat Pop, but, but Pop kicks out of two and a half. Uh, goes to a moonsault and he missed, and then Pac, uh, Pac locks in the Brutalizer for the win. Match he gave three out of five stars, so it was a pretty fun match. Uh, then afterwards, Pac and Orange Cassidy face off, and then the Lucha Brothers come out, beat the crap out of the best friends again. Continuing their little feud. And Pac gets up. And then. And then uh, Pac says that they're the, they're the death triangle. Or triangle de la muerta. In Spanish for you stupid people. See I know Spanish. I won't speak it. But you know Rosa. That's, that's Rosa's gig. But Rosa doesn't do videos. Even though she did one video like way back. Way back when. But, uh... Not anymore. Oh, she's too good for YouTube. You know, she just annoys me. I, I digress, but I'm just kidding. Uh, so then afterwards, they hit the fear factor on Orange Cassidy, laying them out. So then we got a new faction in on AEW. We got a lot of factions in AEW. We got the Inner Circle. We got Jurassic Express, SCU, the Dark Order... Now, uh, what else? I think it's on, uh, the Inner Circle, of course. Uh, the Dark Order, like I mentioned. Uh, and, you know, the, the Elite, you can call them a faction. Um, and now the, the Death Triangle. So, we'll see what happens with the Death Triangle uh, as, the weeks, as the weeks and months go on. As the weeks and months go on. And we'll see what happens with that. And we move on. All right, then we see Sean Spears, the perfect. I'll do it twice. Ten. He's looking for a tag partner with Tully Blanchard, whoever that may be. I don't know. It could be Brody Glee. Could be anybody. But uh, we get that, and that's it. All right, match number four. Jake Hager takes uh, takes on QT Marshall with Brandy and Dustin at ringside. Uh, Santana and Ortiz accompany Jake to ringside. Uh, pretty fun match. Hager was in control early. QT comes back. Hager comes back. Missed the Vader bomb. And then QT hits a senton for a near fall. Hager comes back. Locks in the head and arm, head and arm shoulder. Head and arm submission, excuse me. To pick up the victory. Match was alright. Gave it two and a half out of five stars. Uh, and then afterwards, they have a big, humongous brawl. And, uh, Dustin gets involved. Santana and Ortiz get involved. And then Cody comes out to, to make the save, but he gets uh, chair shot by Santana in the back. And they beat him down. And then Matt Jackson comes out and hits a bunch of super kicks. 
Then he goes to Jake Hager, and Jake Hager basically kicked his ass. Uh, and then Hangman Adam Page comes out with a couple of beers, and uh, he puts the beer down, and then he goes to work on Santana and Ortiz, laying them out. And uh, he hit the buckshot lariat on Jake Hager, and he stands tall, and the fans were just going nuts over him. He's fucking over like fuck right now. And uh, he's a star now. That, you know, Revolution made him now. You know, I I, I can only imagine what's going to be next for Adam Page. Maybe it, maybe the heel turn comes at Blood and Guts, or maybe Kenny and the Bucks turn on him. Who knows? Um, and that was that. Uh, so um, he clears the ring, and then uh, Mac Jacks is like, "Are we cool?" And uh, Page flips him off. So. <laughs> So we'll see what happens with that. You know, Paige still hates the Bucks. And um, he hates Kenny even more. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that as we move on from that. And uh, that that's that. All right, then we get clips of Nick uh, of Nyla Rose and Chris Statlander shown. Where Nyla Rose retained the women's title. We get that. And then we find out that next week on the program, we have Ortiz taking on Cody... We have uh, the Dark Triangle in action. We'll see who they face. Probably be the, the best friends in Orange Cassidy. Uh, we have the Butcher and the Blade in action against the Jurassic Express. With um, MJF joining them as well. And then we get the rules for the Blood and Guts match. So, I would assume it's going to be like traditional war games. Back, back when it was in NWA. Uh, five on five. Uh, probably like five on five. Or six on six, but probably five on five, uh, and the winner, the the, the the they have a coin flip to see who goes in first, and then like uh, they go in first, two men go in first, and then after every like maybe three to five minutes, another person comes out until everybody's in the cage, and then war games officially begins. They could do that. I don't. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens next week with with what the rules are for war game for blood and guts, basically war games. But we'll see what happens with that, and we move on from there. All right. Then we get an MJF promo. Uh, he says he pins shoulders and bangs rats. Whatever that means. Uh, he went from protege to. Uh, to a master, or I forgot what he said, but he says he's the best champion in, in history, kind of mocking, kind of digging at John Moxley, and he talks like Moxley. Uh, he says he will beat anyone to do to get the title and do and and do what he says he's gonna do. Then he says he's better than us, and we know it. And he's wearing a uh, I pin Cody shirt. What are you, Mastermind all of a sudden? From the XWF? Taking a page out of that book, huh? Fuck you. And uh, that's all I gotta say about that. So, good promo from MJF. And we'll see what he, what happens with him over the next couple weeks. He teams up with Butcher and the Blade against the Jurassic Express in his first match since Revolution. So, we'll see what happens with that. And we won't. So, I gave that uh, two and a half out of five stars. And that was that. All right, then we get to the main event. John Moxley and Darby Allen take on Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. Uh, so uh, Jericho and Sammy come out first, and then Darby Allen comes out, and then Moxley comes out. And as he's coming down, come down the stairs through the crowd, he gets attacked by three Max men. Can you tell who they are? I think you know. Uh, who are Santana Ortiz and... And Jake Hager, they drag him into the concession stand. And no, they didn't hit the dippity dots. Sadly. But it is what it is. Uh, they beat his ass with a trash can. Choke him out. Uh, then Hager, then Moxley tried to fire back. But then Jake Hager hits a low blow. And they dump trash on him. Choke him out. And, um, then, and then uh, Jake Hager choked him out. That left Darby all alone to for the match. And Darby put on a pretty... Good fight. Uh, he controls the start, and then um, the inner circle 
isolate Darby. Uh, Jericho locked on the walls of Jericho. Darby counted out of it and escaped. Uh, he makes a comeback and hits a dive like Jericho to the outside. Uh, Attacked is Sammy Guevara. Sammy comes back on him. Uh, then Jericho comes comes back in the ring. They double they double team Darby for a little bit, and then the Lion Soul gets countered, and uh, Darby hits a Canadian Destroyer. And uh, I'm trying to read my notes here. I can't see what the fuck I wrote. And hits the coffin drop on on the entire inner circle on the outside. Uh, he brings it back in. Hits the stunner. Then he hits the coffin drop. Looks to win the match, but only gets two as Jericho saves the match. Uh, then he throws Jericho to the outside and looks to go for a uh, a dive, but Jericho hits the Judas Effect elbow on him, knocking him out. He throws Darby in the ring, in the ring, and Sammy Guevara picks up the bones and pins him to get the win. So that was that. So, the match was pretty good. I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. So, the Inner Circle dominate. And that was that. And then, after the match, Moxley comes out. So, it's beating up the entire Inner Circle. But then, Jake Hager cut him off. And then, they take him to the stage. Jake Hager chokes him out. Again. And then, they pick up Moxley and Powerbomb him off the stage. Through uh, some electrical equipment and... Uh, tables, laying them out, and that was that for for, uh, for AEW Dynamite. So Jericho said what he was going to do. He said that like, Moxie wouldn't wouldn't leave Denver under his own power, so he powerbombed him through a table, laying him out. So uh, no, we're not going to miss Jericho for two months. That That's not going to happen. So I guess the kind of planting the seeds for blood and guts is going to be Inner Circle versus the Elite. Uh, you could throw in, uh, you might, they might throw an MJF in there as making a six on six. I think it's still going to be five on five, traditional five on five. It'd be uh, Santana Ortiz, Jake Hager, Jericho, and Sammy Guevara taking on Hangman Adam Page, the Bucks, Cody, and Kenny Omega. That's what's going to be War Games. I can tell you right now. That's what I think it's going to be. And it's going to be bloody. It's going to be barbaric. Um, and it's just going to be something to look at in uh, in three weeks on March the 25th. From, from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Should be a great match. And, uh, you know, we'll see how AEW's version of War Games goes. We've seen it in NXT the past three years. And all three matches have been pretty good. You know, all the Unspeeded Era have been each in each of them. And uh, they've lo- I think they've lost each time. I know they lost last year's War Games. I think I think they lost the year before. No, did they, they win before the year before? I think they won the year before that. And then they lost the first year. I could be wrong, but it is what it is. And we'll see what, hap- what happens with, uh, with, with that. And uh, as we move on to next week's show in Utah, in Mormon country. So, we'll see what happens with that. We got Cody taking on Santana. See if he gets gets some revenge after Santana hit him with a chair. We'll see what happens with that. And if Jake Roberts is in the distance, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, we got MGF, the Butcher, in the play, taking on Jurassic Express. Should be a fun match. Uh, and... Uh, We'll see what happens with Moxley and Jericho and the rest of the Inner Circle next week. And then we'll see what happens with Hangman Adam Page and the Bucks and Kenny. Is there any further... For, for anything further going on with that? And uh, that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. So next week should be a good show. And we'll see what happens with everything. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. So that is it for AEW. Thank you for watching. Uh, my final rating is 7.5 out of 10 stars. 7.5 out of 10 stars for the show. It was pretty good. It wasn't great like last week's show, but kind of a little bit of a step down. Now, kind of didn't have that oomph uh, that they brought last week. But still, 
a good show. Uh, the ratings come out, I would think, tomorrow. So, uh, when I do my NXT review, hopefully, hopefully I will have the, the ratings for, uh, for both shows. If not, I'll probably talk about it on, uh, on my, on my, uh, on my next video. Probably on, on, um, I'll probably talk about it in, in a separate video on, um, this channel. Uh, but we'll see what, we'll see what happens tom tomorrow. Maybe I'll do three videos. I'll do... I got, I got my uh, NXT review tomorrow. And then TGC 162. With my Elimination Chamber predictions. Because I won't be able to do it Friday night. Because I'll be at WOW Friday night. Meeting up with Demolition and SA Rios and Barry Horowitz. And, and the like. And seeing great WOW action. At Brooklyn Beatdown. As they call it. As we get that. We'll see what happens with that. As we as we get to that on Friday night in Brooklyn, New York, and that's pretty much it. So once again, seven and a half out of ten stars for AEW Dynamite, and we'll see what happens next week on the show. And it should be a good show. And that's all I gotta say about that. As we start our road to double or nothing, and well, well, our road to blood and guts first, and then after that, we start the road to double or nothing in May. On May 23rd of uh, this year. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. So, long way to go, but we start the road towards blood and guts. As we go to Utah next week. And I think the week after that is in Milwaukee, I believe. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. And that's it for, for that. So, thank you for watching. I'm Peter Gilmore signing off. Peace out. Rock the fuck on. And if you're not down with that... Well, fuck you. And that's all I gotta say about that. If you don't like it, get the fuck off my channel. And uh, keep it moving. I don't have time for you parasites. And uh, that's all I gotta say about that. So thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Wednesday night. And even better Thursday. I'll be back tomorrow with some videos. And that's all I gotta say about that. So thank you for watching. Leave your questions down below. Continue to subscribe to this channel and all my other channels as well. And keep friending me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And hit that bell, turn on all my notifications so you never miss an upload. And you stay in the loop and hopefully YouTube can send out my videos to you so you never miss out. And if you do, well, that's your problem. And that's pretty much it. So that's it. Have a great night, everybody. I'm out. Peace, bitches.